The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, Jesus said to his disciples, Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. For truly I say to you, until heaven and earth pass away, not an iota, not a dot will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Therefore, whoever relaxes one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Do we burn with the zeal of Eliah towards God? My brothers and sisters in Christ, Usually, I do not preach my homilies on the first reading, but today, I will dwell on the first reading for the reflection. We see Eliah standing before the people and the authorities. Every time I do this reading or I read this again and again, it inspires me and gives me so much of zest in my heart that I'm not able to overcome and in the first reading today, if you have followed how Eliah talks right from the beginning till the end, you should have seen how many different actions that Eliah does. First, Eliah dares to call everybody together. My dear brothers and sisters, if you have to announce a message, you have to call somebody to come closer. Then. Eliah calls the people to come closer. Then he calls the authorities to come closer. Then when he has gathered everybody, then he speaks. He just doesn't speak on a random. But rather, his speech is a challenge. Eliah, who dared to gather everybody together, challenges everyone and says, how many days you are going to go on limping between this God and that God? Come. Today, let us find out who the true God is. He challenges them. And then after having challenged them, he mocks at them. You see, the fire of God which was in Eliah was so much that when he looks at the, the inhuman things that the prophets of the Baal were doing, he could not take it. And then when the prophets of Baal could not identify themselves or could not verify themselves or could not prove their God was a true God, he mocks at them. That's the third thing that he does. He dared to call them together, he challenged them and then he mocked their God. He tells in the first reading, if you have heard, I'm the only prophet left. Whereas the, the prophets of Baal and the priests of Baal were 450 in number, which you will find after the the entire incident or after the today's first reading, if you go on and continue to read, you will find there were 450 priests of Baal there. After having mocked, then he puts his faith to test. He tested his faith. My dear brothers and sisters, for the priests of Baal, they had to just ask for the fire to come down from heaven. But when it was the turn of Eliah, Eliah says, pour water on the sacrifice. So the water was poured on the sacrifice, that is on the bull, then the, the, the stones, everything was wet, and the water filled even the trench. Three times water was poured on the sacrifice. And then when he tested his faith and then he pleads to God, then he says, O oh God, let all those who are gathered here know that you are the true God. Then finally, he proved that God 
is the living God. Our God is the living God. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, in the book of Deuteronomy, when the people of Israel were marching in the wilderness or in the desert, this was the word that they constantly used. Who is like our God, who is so close to us, who understands our feeling and our needs and always caters to us and always at our side, walking with us towards our promised land. My dear brothers and sisters, this was the same faith that Eliah had and because of which Eliah continues to do what he had to do for God. So therefore, when you see the entire reading, Eliah dares to gather the people to himself, he challenges them, he mocks them, he tests his faith and then he pleads for the Lord's intervention and finally he proved that God is truly God. And after this first reading, you continue to read. Then he calls to the people and says, Now you know who is the true God and what are we to do with these? So they killed the 450 priests of Baal, 450 priests, prophets of Baal there. But the brothers and sisters, in this manner, Eliah proves who the true God is. And for him, all that was in his mind was God and the love for God and the zeal for God and nothing else. He was so blind of God that nothing more he could think of. Last week's one of the reading, a scribe of the law came to Jesus and asked Jesus, what is the first commandment? And Jesus said, love your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul and with all your strength. What is to love God with all your strength? This is loving God with all the strength. Eliah did not believe anybody, but rather he believed in what God had promised and he believed whom he is following or whom he is having his faith on and because of which he dared to call everybody together and challenge them and mock them of their faith and of their God. My dear brothers and sisters, this is loving God with all the strength. And in today's gospel, Jesus says, uh, not even an iota or a dot which is written in the law will go away without being coming to fulfillment. And Jesus says, it is not the law that it is important, but the spirit of the law. And when we follow the spirit of the law, the one who gave the law was more important than anything else. And it is God who gave the law to Moses. And God destined people of Israel to walk in that particular manner. But then, as they slowly gave up God for small things, gave up God for meager things, Eliah had to intervene to teach them or to prove to them who the real God is. My dear brothers and sisters, do we or have we realized who the true God is in our lives? Today, people are having a doubt who the true God is at this time? Is it COVID or God? Is it COVID or God? Because God is not able to extinguish the pandemic COVID. But then COVID has already locked all the churches and closed all the doors. If that is the case, who is God? Has Corona become a, became, become a God? The other day, I was reading an article where a child is asked, please explain in a paragraph of 10 lines what COVID or Corona is. The child goes on writing, Corona is one of the major fees. And when this Corona comes, we have holidays. Everybody stay at home. We have different, different dishes and items to eat. Whole time we keep eating and we enjoy so much that all are having a great feast. My dear brothers and sisters, Corona has already become a feast. I'm sure and I, I, I doubt it can even become God. Therefore, check your faith today. If you're limping between these two, like Eliah, someone has to come. To question your faith, to ask you how many more days that you're going on limping. Maybe Corona seems to you big today. But then in front of, of a living God, it's just small. A day will come when all these pandemic will go away. And it is at this time that you got to still prove on. Tell yourself, in all these situations, 
oh god i was faithful are we able to say that will we able to live like that will we have the zeal that elia was burning with every day for the living god